Welcome to part two of JFK, Apollo 11, 9 11, Flat Earth, QAnon, COVID 19, What the Fuck, on this week's episode of Semi Retired. We pick up the action where we left off last week, talking about the Twin Towers. I had gotten married on the 25th of August, just before. Ah. Just before, and we had booked a trip to uh, Tahiti. We were going on the nice. dream honeymoon. I'd never been anywhere. I mean, I've been to the States a couple of times, but uh, I'd never been anywhere. And because of this, I remember all flights were canceled. Oh, your honeymoon flight was canceled? Yes. So I I called my travel agent and I said, what happens? I said, we took the cancellation insurance and the travel agent said, yeah, about that. Cancellation insurance doesn't cover acts of uh, terrorism. Of course not. And I went, what? And she's like, yes. I said, what happens? She goes, well, you lose everything. Everything. And this was substantial money to fly to Tahiti for us. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I think it's three days before we had to fly out in October, air travel resumed whatever slowly and we were able to fly out. And I remember flying, (laughs) getting to Dorval and I got flagged at every single airport that my bags checked for explosives. And when we got to LA, we were supposed to, I know we're going on a tangent here. When we got to LA. It's okay, tangents are good. Yeah, when we got to LA, my friend, a friend of mine had told me, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're right by Venice Beach, throw your bags in a locker. And we had a 12 hour layover in LA because I didn't want to go through Atlanta and have a closer connection, but I didn't want to go through Atlanta, the busiest airport in the world. So we went to LA and when we got there, the army was there uh, walking around, M16s, everything, lockers were off guards, weren't allowed to walk away with your bags. We had, no to spend, kidding, eh? we had to spend 12 hours walking around the airport, couldn't do anything, couldn't leave. Wow. And when we got to Tahiti, uh, a few days later, uh, there was no TV, there was nothing there. Uh, essentially, there was, uh, you know, it was kind of secluded, it was a, it was a club med. I guess that was the whole point, right? They got to get away from it point. all, right? Yeah. And like, I think once a week they would show, or one, one they would show a movie or something. Uh-huh. And I remember when uh, the US invaded Afghanistan, when they, they started the thing, we were down there. And poof, the screens went up and we were like, here we are in paradise on our honeymoon and there's a, there's a war starting here. Well, you know, it's funny, you, again, while we're on the tangent, I'll just one, you know, you, you said earlier about the airport security. Uh, younger listeners will not remember a time before airport security. I'm remembering now, I used to, I flew quite a bit in the, uh, in, in the years before 9-11, often to Toronto from Montreal. So it was like a, literally getting on the morning bus and I recall having uh, my timing down to, I, I think I would get to the airport a half an hour before my flight. I'd be parked. I wanted to park 30 minutes ahead of time. It would take me 10 minutes to walk in, get to the, uh, get to the counter, have a coffee, get on the flight and go. It was like, there was, there was the, the only impediment was if there was a lineup at the actual gate at the counter to sort of show your pass or to show your ticket or whatever. Yeah. But you just walked on, man. Yeah. That was it. And now, well, you know, well, yeah, now it's like such a you know all that change, and you know, I, I for, with good reason I understand, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. what a shame, eh? But um, I, I thought while we're talking about nine eleven uh, in the context of cons- conspiracy theories, I found something on the internet I want to share as part of this uh, part of this podcast. There was and perhaps is a an organization in the United States called the Project for the New American Century. In fact, I think one of our presidents at a company that I used to work for was part of the, this project for the New American Century. I seem to recall him talking about it. I had no idea what it was, but it seems that it was a kind of a neoconservative think tank, neocons being famous for later on, uh, you know, being uh, very much in favor, you know, and, you know, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And they had released a paper in 1997, part of which was called Rebuilding America's Defenses. And the uh, I found it in a couple of places, and the quote is this, the process of transformation, which is to say rebuilding America's defenses, even if it brings revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor, close quote, 1997. And a lot of people in the wake of 9-11 sort of seized on this. Uh, it, it was the, the, the quote was made public in an article by a journalist known as John Pilger in December 2002, uh, looking back at 9-11 and going, well, again, I don't, he wasn't saying, oh, this, this is evidence of conspiracy, but isn't it interesting mm-hmm. that these guys, you know, these, these top thinkers, you know, geopolitical thinkers arrayed around George Bush now, not, not in 1997, were thinking this. Yeah, four years before uh, before the the master plan went into action. Before right? the master plan went into action, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the conspiracies, well, you know, 
a lot of conspiracy. I guess the biggest conspiracy is that this it, this event was perpetrated by the U.S. government. Inside job. Inside job. Inside job. Which I don't believe at all, by the way. Which is 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 so insane, right? But that's yeah. why it's that's why it makes sense, man. Because yeah. nobody would believe that it's not believable. And there's another one of the motives, right? The unbelievability is what makes it believable. That's exactly. another one. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the fact that the government would be willing to kill 3,000 or plus of its citizens to advance its agenda seems almost insane in such a, a dramatic fashion. I mean, obviously governments have done this before, usually not here. Uh, don't yeah. go down that rabbit hole too yeah. long, they will believe the theory. Doesn't it sound like the upside down in Stranger Things? It does. It huh? does That's yeah. the upside down, right? Yeah. <laughs> the new upside it's down. It's a great show. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, crazy, uh, crazy. And then after that, not long after, uh, came all the videos about uh, watch the way the building falls. Yes. And this building had been, uh, it explodes from the bottom. Yeah, building and, seven or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, this whole yeah. thing where, uh, you know, while the planes crash, simultaneous maybe detonations happened in the base yeah. to make the buildings fall. There's no way these buildings, if a plane hits a building, there's no way that the building can collapse the way it did. And then you have the counters who say well all the fuel would have leaked down the elevator towers and ignited at the bottom and blah 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 and you have like point point counterpoint here you know yeah and i think it was suggested when we look at the the third plane the one that crashed into the pentagon an hour or so later gps I, error <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> tipsy, i was using tip, ways <laughs> tipsy pilot <laughs> yeah. uh it was suggested that because apparently because there was no the, the the explosion was so, or the uh, event, the impact, whatever, was so intense that it left behind no aircraft. There was no that there was this, it was a missile. Mm. It was suggested it had been like like flown, had been like shot into the Pentagon. And again, this was part of the inside job. Was like you know some some U.S. military asset had like you know gunned the Pentagon as part of the overall you know story of that day. Isn't there a fourth plane that got shot down by the F by the by the army as a possible threat uh well there was the one that went down passengers brought it down right that was up in pennsylvania or something, something like that uh, yeah I mean, if there was another one i don't remember okay okay you know i remember the three it was the two the twin towers and you know i mean to this day i've never seen i don't think i've ever seen anything more dramatic than that footage of you know every now and then it shows up so i don't go looking for it but it'll show up somewhere and i watch it again and you're like jesus murphy that's really something to see that large and you know we've all been on those big aircraft to think of that just collapsing into that building mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable to to conceive of it you know exactly. the violence of it my god and the violence is to, to to believe that that uh this would have been an inside job is is kind of insane too. yeah well i mean like i it, it was it has been suggested i hate to well but why not that um franklin delano roosevelt then president of the united states uh knew in advance of the pending japanese attack on pearl harbor and allowed it to take place because he needed to galvanize the population for the, you know, what he saw as the coming war with both Germany and Japan. And the population in 1941 was very uh, isolation. It's very anti-war. Mm -hmm. And so they said, okay, well, we'll let the Japanese take out our Pacific fleet, a large part of our Pacific fleet. Uh, it'll so, so piss everybody off that, you know, we'll be able to, you know, do what we need to do, transform the economy into a war economy, conscript tens of millions of young... That's another conspiracy theory. Kill off theory. our youth. Kill Why off not? our youth, that's yeah. How, that's how yeah. you progress, right? That's you how you kill do off it, yeah. Youth, yeah. So that's another one. Yeah. But there's also there was also talk, wasn't there, that Japan and the US had, years before the war, made some sort of war games, which is an, almost an exact reenactment of Pearl Harbor pre-war i hadn't heard that yeah uh, i picked that up somewhere too and i'm like really are these things happening i mean they, when you want to grasp at straws wow there's straws everywhere right? oh yeah very much oh, so yeah, yeah yeah all of a sudden you're in a you're in a hayride yeah you know one of the things that bothers me is that in movies or tv shows that had depicted the twin towers in the backgrounds they've gone in and they started removing some of the uh some of the towers eh? oh i heard yeah, that actually yeah. yeah i find that kind of sad to, to i agree take that out as i guess the feeling is that it's very emotional for people to see right. the towers that are not right. there anymore it right. reminds them of the event but i find whitewashing yeah. Taking those things out reminds me of those Soviet images where, yeah. where after a general be assassinated, he'd be 
airbrushed out of the photo. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, General yeah. never existed. I don't never know what you're talking about. Name, yeah. No, no. Well, that's 1984, right? Replaced with a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with that either. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's an odd uh, aftershock of the whole thing. But, um, you know, let's face it. I mean, uh, 9-11 uh, set the stage for uh, the war with Afghanistan and eventually Iraq. So mm. you know, talk about a world-changing event. Also, uh, it led to this uh, massive increase in uh, in the lining of the pockets of a lot of uh, of the American corporations. You know, the whole the whole thing of weapons of mass destruction. What a shock! This, uh, exactly, which led to uh, all this stuff being available to the police. And now you look at the police, uh, you know, coming to uh, driving down the street, and they're wearing like body armor. And oh, stuff. this is yeah. the militarized look of the police. I've yeah, heard of this, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Which is a, a direct thing because all the companies had this, you know produced all this material and now they're like and the police are taking on this more and more less of a peacekeeping role and more of a military type role almost oppressors right I mean, yeah we're not gonna get into the whole defund the police kind of thing no 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 but, but I mean, you, you, you get everything is stricter now security stricter at the airports the bus terminals everywhere you yeah. go now everything has become uh i don't want to say a police state but it's uh it's kind of you know you can you can time all that stuff back to to 911 the, the the increased scrutiny like you know if you're photographing a train you're going to get arrested now right. photographing a bridge right you're not allowed uh, i was at the the old port taking photos and two security guys came out and told me i wasn't allowed to photograph the port come on yeah, yeah the yeah. old port yeah this is uh last summer the summer before really yeah, eh? yeah. The only place I was ever stopped I did was it anyways. I, th- I included him in a photograph later that, as he walked away. That's strange. <laughs> you were just like just you just yeah yeah yeah. We were there. Me me and Carmen were photographing parts of the old port, and we, there was like a tower sticking out that I thought was interesting. And then yeah. is it's the, uh, the I don't know what you call it, not the runway, but there's a there's a, the whole part where you can walk through yeah. to get yeah. whatever. And I and I was photographing that because it was interesting letters and numbers sure. on the glass. Sure. And the guy came out and told me we're not allowed. Yeah, I got stopped at Fairview once. Uh, I was photographing the the fount. I was waiting for uh, my daughter who was I was mm. picking her up after work, and I just thought I had my camera. I was like, oh, I was you know the fountain there, whatever. Yeah. And the guy came up and said, you know, put the camera away, like you know, kind of thing. I said, well, like, why well, you get private property? You can't take pictures here. And I sort of said, you know, there's people in here with iPhone. I, I had a camera. I said, there's people in here with iPhone. I guarantee they're taking pictures. Yeah. Are you stopping everybody? You know, I, I'm not usually rebellious like that, but I was kind of bugged. I was like, come on, man. What am I? What What am I? Doing? I know that's true, by the way. I know there's people taking pictures all over the mall. Just oh, that's yeah, what yeah, people sure, do with their cameras, sure. with there's their people phones. taking videos. In yeah, the mall. videos yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Th- that's another thing that was affected by that too. Was the whole the whole thing that we had enemy agents everywhere, right? Because this this happened. Yeah, Hi- planes on American soil had been hijacked. Yeah, uh, you know, was there help in getting uh, getting yeah. those planes hijacked? And that's the whole thing, right? Where this was a domestic, yeah. well, not a domestic terrorist thing. You know, they they linked it back to to being out of country. Yeah, but the fact that they were able to hijack so many planes simultaneously yeah. on American and so it led to yeah. a, a kind of a paranoia probably not existent since the war right where you know turn out your lights uh, you well, know, I'm it, sure it, it, loose lips sink ships this kind of thing like uh, loose those, lips those lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where everything was suspect you couldn't photograph anything and that uh, you know photogra- uh, photographers got a uh, uh, you know a bad rap you had you'd be really careful what you were photographing wow yeah and so there was a whole uh, series of videos and websites you know telling photographers these are your rights if anybody approaches you or this this is your right in this certain situation blah 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 be all because of 911 I didn't well, know that. it goes back to that right, right. I mean, it started yeah. there like how did they get their planes right so it must have been right. someone who had intel and how yeah. do you get intel you take yeah. photos right yeah. that's yeah. that's what spy movies tell us yeah. Dave yeah. <laughs> that, that is what they tell us yeah and just you know your earlier point about uh, yeah military pro- I mean that's what always happens though right if you think to yourself it's it's so paradoxical I mean, Dwight Eisenhower, mind you, said this, a U.S. president, when he was uh, leaving office in 1960, said we have to guard against the uh, undue influence, sought or unsought, of the military-industrial complex. Because once that's there, it's like all companies, it has to make money, it has to make profit. That's, That's what they're designed to do. So if there's no war no sales yeah. it's it's kind of a strange it's yeah it's a conundrum maybe a little deeper than we want to get today i don't know but uh, i'm glad you raised that it's a, it's a big one and uh that one doesn't necessarily go away and it's one of those things that the flat earthers the the guys everybody who's into conspiracy theories right that you got your jfk's you got your nine yeah. elevens those yeah. are, those are your your, your big uh, your big ones those are big ones yeah 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 but there's more, right? There's more, Dave. Is there more? What's more? I feel like there's more. Well, let's let's come forward a few years and talk about QAnon, uh, which I've heard described as an amalgam, uh, a fusion, a cocktail, if you will, 
of of many many conspiracy theories, and it seems to have come QAnon seems to have well, become. It's a, a group, right? Yeah. Well, it, that, that's the that's that's the interesting part. Okay. Um, it is it is said. I don't know this, but it is said that the person known as Q began posting on a website called 4chan, which I've mm. never been to. I've heard of it back in 2017 and began posting about the fact that the deep state, as personified by big business, uh, big tech, uh, big government, you know, this this whole kind of group of people, cabal of people, and on a global level, were taking over, if you will. And the only person who could stand in their way was none other than Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the antidote to this deep state takeover. And this person, Q, or again, individual, 100 people who knew, began posting and people began picking up on this and sharing this information on various websites. And it grew and grew and grew, did this movement into QAnon, I think it was like Q Anonymous, like, and they began attending um, these people who believed in Q, believed what Q was saying, um, began attending Donald Trump political rallies and identifying themselves with these yeah. Q signs yeah. to the point where Trump was asked at a uh, press conference that I saw at some point, I think it was in the White House, about, about QAnon. And, you know, was it, and, and he said something to the effect that, well, you know, and, and were these people supporters of his? And he said something. I wish I could get this uh, bang yeah, I, on. I think it's, uh, I don't know much about them, but I know they like me. Thank so you. It's thing. something like that. Yeah. Thanks for filling that. Exactly. Yeah. And they all took that and went, yeah, is it, you know, like, yes, like, that's it. Like uh, the chief, the chief believes in us. And off it went in a, in a, in a hundred different, if different directions. I mean, and there's this whole thing about how um, the U.S. is, uh, and I think it's the U.S. or the world is run by a gang of pedophiles you know, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and they are, they're feeding on the blood of children. It's really horrible stuff. Like, oh, it it's is. just it, horrible stuff. Yeah. I think the main purpose, from what I've, I've been gathering, okay, so I'm looking through this, I'm reading a bunch of stuff, and I think their main purpose is to, is to push out this information and to, uh, to put out the, the thought, the little niggling thought that maybe what we're, not, what we're hearing on the news is not real, as, hence the term... Well, the fake, fake news, news, the fake news, yeah. And there's a quote, and I forget which uh, which of my 17 tabs it's in, uh, where Donald Trump is asked about this, about the fake news thing, and he and he says, and I wish I had the quote directly in front of me, maybe I'll find it later, he says something like, uh, the reason I, I push fake news is so that when someone writes, is, is, to, is to make people disbelieve the news, so when someone writes anything bad about me, they won't believe it. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, and it, that's like and the, that's like the three dimensional chess, right? Exactly, yeah. and, and it makes perfect sense. You know, you have this group of people who will put out a bunch of lies, and I mean, they're probably sitting there laughing their ass off, saying, "What's the wildest thing we can do?" Yeah, a pizza parlor that's a sex trafficking ring. Oh, PizzaGate, yeah, PizzaGate, yeah. exactly. Yeah, let's throw that out, and then people ran with it yeah. and believed it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's insane. Yeah. It's completely insane that there would be. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think these are much what this is QAnon is really widespread. It became global, by the way. Apparently, mm -hmm. just oh, like, yeah, yeah. and I think what you're looking at here is just yeah, yeah. And you see, like this general distrust people seem to have about information in this day and age. M maybe not surprising in the in the era of social media and you know multiple website multiple news sources on the web, whether legitimate, not legitimate. Fear of uh, or distrust of you know corporate news. As part of this, you know, the overall ruling class phenomenon, whatever, it's all there. You know, I mean, the Tinder is there and I guess Q set it on fire. You know, it's it's pervasive, right? So the whole fake news, fake news, fake news. We we heard this so often uh, from from Trump and you start hearing it from other people, other politicians, yep. other, uh, you know, it crossed the border into here. I've heard people say it here. And it's, it's one of those insidious things now that they question or they were questioning any any uh, negative reports or articles written about them they would question right so yes. oh, we oh, no no fake news fake news i never yeah. i never said uh, you know what i said even though it's caught on videotape now i ha i find that it's it's infected everyone even to m myself when i read a news article now i have this little niggling thing that i'm like i got to check this four times because i don't even know if this is true now me too i agree with you it, it, it's terrible it's yeah. it's undermined uh what we what we took for granted as being I don't want to say gospel because I'm not one of those. But when you watch the news, you watch Cronkite or yep. you watch whatever, yep. right? Yeah. This thing was there. Lloyd Robertson. <laughs> Lloyd Robertson, exactly. You'd watch the news and you took for granted yeah. that, you know, research had been done, fact checking had been done, yep. this was done. Yep. And now you get an entire network uh, whose name rhymes with Fox. Who, what uh, could that be? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure who that is. Rhymes with rocks, yeah. <laughs> rhymes with rocks, yeah. 
uh, who 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 can just and I don't understand how this happens. They can just spew whatever, yeah. and there's no consequence. Yeah, it's interesting that, and I, and I know I'm the same way. You as I'm, I'm much more. I'm very selective about the news I listen to, mm. I, and I'm always trying to, you know, listen to what I think are reputable sources. But even now, I, I'm I'm always wondering what's the agenda. Mm-hmm. Like, why am I reading this? Why is this, you know, website or this news source taking this position? Are they, you know, again, I hate to say it, everything's become lefty-righty, right? Are they conservative? Are they liberal? Are they, you know, are they uh, towing the corporate line, you know? And it all stems out of, you know, uh, again, I, I, I think I think you're right. I think Donald Trump is a big part of that when he started the fake news business. And then what was it, Kellyanne Conway say, used the term alternate facts? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that Alternate, fa- alternate fact? Alternate truth? Alternate, yeah, something, something yeah. Like oh, yeah, yeah. It was, and that, that became a big deal, right? Yeah, that was a jaw-dropping line to believe that yeah. someone who was the, I believe she was the press secretary at the time when she threw that out, right? Yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. alternate facts. Yeah. You know, which which flies in the face of what we think a fact is. Exactly. The smoking you know? gun is smoking because it likes to smoke. Well, a flat earth is an alternate fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, some would say. <laughs> some would say. Some exactly. would say. So yeah, and I think now, uh, I, I think now that cat is out of the bag. Nobody believes anybody else. You're right about Fox News. I, I watch what they say sometimes. I don't watch the channel. I, I see the clips uh, on YouTube that I sometimes listen to because I want to see what they're saying. And I, I again, I, I, again, sometimes I, I, I don't know how they get away with it. it, it you know, I mean, and again, I, that assumes that I know what I'm talking about, that what I believe is real. But I feel like I've done my homework, and I, I you know, I, I get, I have a sense of what's going on, and I think, man, I don't know how you can, how you can do that, how that's okay. Uh, apparently, I heard this the other day uh, on that point. Um, whenever they need to defend themselves in court, they describe themselves as an entertainment company, not a news company. Really? Yeah. Should, now, shouldn't it be Fox Entertainment? Well, you would think. Or yeah. news in quotation yeah, you marks. Would, wouldn't you think? Yeah. And yet Fox News you see there. So I know, like, again, is that true or not true? I don't know anymore. I mean, it's like quicksand. But if it's true, that explains a lot. And so that kind of uh, thinking, I mean, we're, we're talking a lot about the U.S. here, but you, I mean, I mean, that's carried carries across here too. You see, oh, of course uh, it does. Yeah, yeah. You see uh, some of the conservative uh, leaning uh, newspapers or news uh, news sources also uh, toting on, not maybe not saying f- fake news or whatever, but you see that that mentality creeping up here in Canada too, and I'm sure it's all over the world. I mean. QAnon is everywhere, right? QAnon is everywhere. I mean, yeah. again, there, there's, yeah, QAnon believers uh, uh, all, all around, uh, well, around the end, <laughs> all yeah. over this flat yeah. earth. Yeah. yeah, all over this flat earth, including uh, the land of Canada. Ah, uh, Canada, yes, yeah, so, that we're familiar with. So what's happening with Q and Canada, Dave? Well, hold on, uh, could you be referring to the <laughs> Queen of Canada? Isn't, isn't that her, Her Majesty uh, Elizabeth uh, Ele- Windsor? <laughs> Well, I thought so. <laughs> She's not the queen? Uh, well, that depends who you listen to. Okay. Because there is a new, and I'm not going to use this woman's name because so I don't want to. Elizabeth wanna... being the queen is fake news, apparently. Apparently that's fake news. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's okay. right. So there's a new uh, person, self-styled queen of Canada. She's a middle-aged woman. And she, again, began posting on the internet, YouTube specifically, I think sometime in 2021. As part of the, again, the greater family of Q conspiracy uh, conspiracists, and she claims to be the uh, the Queen of Canada, our commander in chief, and the head of the Canadian government. And you think, okay, well, that's interesting. She's racked up a total of something like seventy thousand followers. I heard. I don't know where that number comes from. Is that people following her on Twitter, on YouTube? I'm not sure where they get the number from. Are they paying dues to organizations? I'm not sure. She's got a YouTube channel where you can see videos of her various activities. And um, she's been traveling the country in Winnebago's, a couple of Win- two or three Winnebago's. Visiting different parts of the country, uh, you know, uh, spreading the gospel, spreading the the gospel. And she is claiming, amongst other things, that people don't have to pay taxes, that the government of Canada is illegitimate, that members of her circle, and they refer to themselves as sovereign citizens. This is another thing. There's this this idea that each of us is a can consider ourselves a sovereign citizen. I think this is a decision you make, thereby uh, liberating yourself or relieving yourself of the burden of paying taxes and whatever. Okay, fine. So I, I've become aware of, of this woman and I've... I've we I went, can name her. It's uh, uh, Romana de Dulo. Okay, so I wasn't going to do that. Now you've done it. <laughs> did you, did you, <laughs> yeah. D-I-D-U-L-O, yeah. So yeah, she's uh, created quite a, a buzz. Uh, she's been traveling uh, across the country and uh, addressing people in various uh, Canadian cities. I think Halifax, Quebec City, Montreal, Toronto, of course, across the West. I think she's from out West. And about 10 days or so ago, 
um, she and her followers uh, wound up in uh, Peterborough, Ontario, where the idea was they had come to arrest members of the police force in their, I guess, in their, you know, in their role as sovereign citizens. So I, I'm guessing that went well. Uh, didn't go well at all. <laughs> at first, they were. I think if I if I heard the news story correctly, they were pounding on the front door of the police station, like you know, knock knock, let us in. We're here to arrest you. And the police officers, <laughs> like wisely, kind of just kept yeah. it cool, didn't open the door, figured like okay, these people are going to go away. And then a couple of them wandered around back till they got within uh, sight of a, a like a, a back entrance to the uh, the police station where uh, the officers, when they come come to work, it's the employees' entrance, I guess, okay. and where the police cars are kept. At which point, a couple of officers came out, and madness began to ensue. Uh, I think when the 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 uh, the Queen's followers uh, announced they were here to arrest them. They, in fact, became arrested themselves. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and peacefully arrested, uh, too, Peacefully, right? yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right. yeah well, you yeah. the videos, it was yeah. not peaceful. No, it was not peaceful. There was a, yeah. a certain amount of kerfuffle, or kerfuffle that went down. And interestingly, and the Queen was there somewhere nearby in her Winnebago, apparently giving out uh, free vegetables and sardines. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. You know. It's, a, it's an interesting choice of choice, uh, yes. of of gifts or yeah. whatever to sustain whatever to carry. Yeah, yeah. This reminds me of my brother. One year, decided uh, to, for Halloween that he was going to play a trick on the on the uh, people coming to the house, and so uh, he made us hand out. One spaghetti strand, dry, and a penny. Now, you have never You're seen You're going to have to fill that in for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was it. That was going to be the trick instead of trick or treat. We were going to trick the kids. And so we proceeded that night to hand out one strand of dry spaghetti and a penny to the most disappointed children you've ever seen in your life. Wow, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like that uh, she's referred to here. There's an article in The Guardian as a fringe QAnon. It's like, I think even QAnon doesn't really want to get their hands dirty. With no, it's this possible. One. Yeah. Fringe. Yeah. I think if you're fringe QAnon, you're, yeah, you're fringe. Yeah. Right? And here, here's a quote on her Telegram channel. She claims that Queen Elizabeth II was executed for crimes against humanity last year. Well, I missed that. And that White Hats and U.S. military together with global allied troops and their governments have helped install her as a sovereign of the Great White North. She sullied the term a Great White North. I mean, Doug well, and Bob, Bob well, and Doug indeed. would be angry with that. Well, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they would, eh? <laughs> well, indeed. Yeah. So that that is from where her power derives. Yes, exactly. I see. Yeah. So Elizabeth is dead and uh, that she's been installed by yeah, okay. exa- the military. Right. And if you go to her YouTube channel, and I suggest you don't, because why give her an extra view? Yeah. Uh, I did it for you, uh, so you don't have so to. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> her last video from three months ago mentions that she was asked by the commander in chief of the you know the army of the US which obviously is is Biden uh, to be the mediator uh, between the United States and Russia in the Ukraine crisis Oh, that should go well. And she proceeds yeah. to talk, but I turned it off. Yeah, that should go well. I think so. <laughs> should I go see. Well. So she would mediate yeah. between, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, it's um, a fascinating person. And again, I, I again, I, I think, so, okay, we, we've got a an outgrowth of QAnon. I got to believe the people who follow stuff like this or who believe in, in some of these ideas, again, are a part of that overall loss of trust we've got in society. You know, they like don't believe anything you know, what news is real, what news isn't real, what, you know, what's reality, what, what is alternate facts. And when they're presented with some, something like that, a set of ideas like this, um, it most, it must come as some kind of relief, you know, provide some sense of belonging that they're part of this select group that like gets it while the rest of us are, you know, still, you know, laboring on paying taxes and things yeah, yeah. like that. Sheeple, as they sheeple, call it. Sheeple, as sheeple. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it, it's fair to point out on the subject of taxes that, and I saw this somewhere, she had, again, the queen had told her followers that they were uh, no longer had to pay taxes. So some did things like example, st- or, or their utilities, uh, stop paying their electricity bills. And lo and behold, their electricity was cut off. And so they wrote to their sovereign and said, hey, you know, uh, city of Red Deer, Alberta, example, just caught off my electricity. What do I do? Crickets. <laughs> crickets. <laughs> so the crickets will pay the bills or they'll turn back on the electricity? Was that it? In like fashion. Yeah. After the uh, the arrests in Peterborough, a release was issued from the Queen's office, I guess. Which Queen? This one. <laughs> saying that uh, the living one, yeah, right. Saying that um, uh, the Queen was in Peterborough not to participate, but to observe. Mm. Uh, thereby, I guess, exonerating herself from any potential liability for the mm. actions of her followers, which I thought was a bit cheap. 
Sounds like a January 6th thing. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Let's incite a riot and then say we were just there to observe. Oh my God. It, we it didn't get, even go to that one. Gets I, bigger, I, I no, I know, I, I know, I know. That. That's, yeah. I agree. That's maybe a little too hot at yeah. this point, right? We'll let that settle down. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, the glory day for fringe groups now to be able to publish anything. I mean, yeah. with the advent yeah. of the internet yeah. and and YouTube and you name a million other uh, sources, the ability to publish anything you want yes. with mostly no repercussions uh, under free speech, freedom of whatever you want to call it, and depending which country you're in. And I think things like QAnon helping to pass the fake news message allows anybody to basically take liberties with whatever they want to say. Yeah, know? I think if it boils down to that, it's more wide open. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, January 6th, again, not to be, you know, it's the, the election was stolen conspiracy, mm-hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. another one. I mean, they, they're they all kind of, almost kind of melding into a giant... Uh, miasma of mi- shit. Miasma, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to say giblet, which is a French word, <laughs> yeah. which I can't quite translate, but it sort of suggests a big bowl of porridge of yeah. conspiracies, but right? I, see, I wouldn't mind eating giblet. Uh, Right. But the miasma of shit I wouldn't eat. That sounds horrible, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm passing on that one sort of thing. So um, so that's, yeah, that's that's QAnon and the Queen of Canada, who, again, is a, a fringe part of QAnon. But that's not the end of QAnon, because there was also a, uh, a COVID-19 angle to QAnon, right? Yes, I, I think part of it was a giant disinformation campaign. Uh, put out by a lot of uh, anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers here, <laughs> maxers again, which I think really hurt in the beginning. There's a lot of denial also of of COVID. Oh, it's, you know, uh, more people die from the flu, uh, the kind of thing you, you heard everywhere, which really early on, I think, discouraged people from doing what should have been right. Well, yeah, well, I mean, there was mass confusion you know, in that month of March, right? We suddenly had the the lockdown and suddenly we began talking about social distancing and we ran out of toilet paper. Let's not forget. I know that was a coincidental uh, event, but still, that you know, it scarred me. Was um, that because people were using toilet paper as masks? <laughs> I think possibly. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I actually made a homemade mask out of a T-shirt. That's horrible. It's like having a like imagine a T-shirt folded up in front of your face. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. At any rate, so yeah, there was a lot of confusion. No one knew what to expect. It's kind of like we're we're all Monday morning quarterbacks now. We look back, and uh, but at the time, I recall it being quite scary, and the numbers coming out of the different countries, like Spain, was really bad bad and this that were really bad italy italy was very bad that's right there was confusion about masks should we wear them should we not wear them did they make a difference all that stuff i mean in the beginning i would come home from the from grocery shopping and wash my hands and all my like you know i know i know somebody who was washing their groceries Mm -hmm. yeah a lot of people were doing that washing their groceries figure because early on we weren't sure exactly how the transmission was happening right there was a lot of talk about touch i know at work we were cleaning surfaces multiple multiple, multiple yeah. times, uh, making sure we had wash stations at both entrances into our warehouse so people would constantly have to wash. And, um, and the thing about the masks also was I think they they went about it the wrong way by passing the message that we put on a mask to help someone else. And essentially, you know, the world is a selfish thing. Yeah. Had, had they come out and said, you know, put on the mask to protect yourself, I think masks, it would have been less of an issue. But That's now a it's good like, point. You're probably oh, you're right. shit about the guy next to me. Why well, I'm putting on a mask to protect him, he should protect himself kind yeah. of thing. And I think that kind of slowed mask adoption until it, they had to enforce it uh, by by law that you, you know, you couldn't get into a store or a restaurant or work even without wearing a mask. Yeah. That, I think hurt the mask movement if we can. And, 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 you know, in terms of the conspiracy aspect of things, there was also, and and still ongoing, the thought that uh, was this a lab leak? Or did it, you know, was it a, a virus that organically, you know, got out of the Wuhan area? And we still don't know. Oh, uh, and, and look at the the uh, the people calling it the China virus, right? At one point, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't yeah. it wasn't COVID. It was the China virus. Let's yeah. let's let's give it a label that we can point at people. And what happened after that? When you start calling it the China virus, you started getting hate crimes against Asians. Yeah, of course you do. No, that was bad. I think I think it was Trump did that originally, mm-hmm. uh, not surprisingly. But uh, I'm sure it got around and. Uh, on the internet and people are looking for a scapegoat, some way to explain, which I think is kind of at the heart of some of these conspiracy theories is people want a way to explain what's happened, whether it's an assassination or the, the death of a beloved figure like Diana say, uh, people want an answer and, and randomness is scary. 
I think. And that's why that, I think that's one of the reasons people go to conspiracies. Yeah. And a couple of the other conspiracies would be the transmission, which, you know, at first we thought, you know, was through touch and contact and you had to <clears throat> make sure you washed your hands after touching everything. And then there was the, you know, we, we eventually realized it's, you know, it's aerosol. It's, it comes mostly from the breath and you can, yes. you know, take it in through your eyes, your nose, your mouth. But my favorite was uh, transmitted via 5G, the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, the five G. <laughs> yeah, you're the, right. Uh, eh? The cell, uh, the cellular. You know, it's like it's, like, it's this like an anti cellular thing. First, cell phones were going to give you cancer. Yes. And now they're going to give you COVID because you know five G. Were they going to sterilize us too? Something like that. I, I think a eh, sort of thing. Harmful radiation in your pants. Who wants that? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always keep my phone in my pants. <laughs> and and here's the thing, and not to get too nerdy on it, but I was thinking about this. Uh, and and yes, the five G as as harmful radiation stories out there. In fact, I saw something on the news a few weeks ago where over in the UK, where they're happening to be doing a lot of cell phone infrastructure work, like now right now in some of the cities. Um, the guys uh, representing the various, uh, you know, internet companies or whatever who are laying fiber optic cable are being uh, assaulted by people who uh, believe that they're going to cause them harm uh, putting in 5G towers. And if you think about, and again, this is my not to get too nerdy part, I think that you can liken uh, radiation to uh, water in the sense that we're familiar with water in all kinds of states, right? When it's a frozen ice cube, we put it in our drinks to make them nice and cold into our rum and Cokes. When it's cold, we drink it. When it's tepid, we like to swim in it. When it's warm or hot, we <laughs> like to, you know, we like to uh, bathe in it, let's yeah. say. And when it's really hot, it's good in coffee and soup. But you don't want it boiling hot. Yeah. Uh, you you chug, a, chug some boiling water and you've got a problem. And it's the same with radiation. And the radiation coming off the 5G is way down at the bottom. It's somewhere down just above cold drinking water and the tepid uh, swimming water. So not going to hurt you. But I guess, you know, uh, maybe some people uh, don't like tepid water. It must be it. Yeah, the anti-tepid group. <laughs> I like my water iced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other, the other uh, conspiracy was that somehow uh, getting a vaccine. There's, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy against the vaccine and against vaccines in general. Uh, you know, uh, it's been going on for a little while. You have the uh, the magnetism that um, oh, the you, 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 you would become magnetic if you uh, if you got a vaccine, which I thought would be kind of cool. I wouldn't have to have a case for my phone. I could just stick it to my <laughs> chest and my phone would stay there. I think I missed someone. So I think I missed that one. So the idea is if you, if you get vaccinated, stuff would stick to you. Yes, and there's a video of some of some uh, woman uh, showing this thing where she takes some something, whatever, puts it on her chest and it stays there. And she goes, see, look, I'm magnetic because I was vaccinated. Wow. Yeah. Hey, wow. The that, length. That, I think that's science 101, right? <laughs> One experiment. Yeah. It sticks to me. Yeah. It's not static cling. No, no, I'm magnetic. Maybe she was just sweaty. I mean, yeah, the, the lengths to which some people will go. And I think, you know, uh, when you look at the, the whole kind of blowback against vaccines and all that, again, I, 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 I kind of cast my mind back to March, April of 2020. No one knew what this thing was. It was all kinds of used to disinformation flying around. And they were estimating like a year to 18 months for a vaccine. And we were locked down and all that stuff. And I don't think like if you were writing this as a movie script, let's say, I don't think you would ever uh, write into it that uh, through prodigious efforts uh, on the part of maybe maybe corner cutting, I don't know. We get a vaccine within what was it? What was the the final come like uh, pandemic to vaccine uh, delivery? Was it a year as much, or maybe yeah. it was ten months or something like that? So excellent performance. People would actually balk at it. You think people have been lining up to get vaccinated, and I don't understand that at all. Yeah, exactly. People complain that cures take too long. Look how long we've been trying to find a a, a, a cure for cancer. Uh, yes. forever and this we find a cure and they're like no nah, no nah, I can't trust it can't trust it came too fast yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, it's it's uh, that that one baffled me and I, I was one of those people who was actually you know r rather in favor of insisting people get vaccinated because re really so they didn't pose a danger to others I, I didn't see that that was much of a uh, uh, of a restriction of civil rights or whatever the argument was I don't know about you but I was think yeah like do that you know yeah. I agree. And, and, you know, the the reasons vaccines work is the herd, the herd immunity. The more people, vaccines only work when a certain percentage of the population gets it because then it helps wipe out the thing. And I think it goes back to uh, the selfish aspect. You know, uh, people don't want to understand that I'm doing it not just for me, but for everyone in general. Right. And we have a certain selfish moi, moi, moi right. aspect that threw in some French there. I like that. Moi, for, moi, moi. <laughs> <laughs> for our international uh, listeners. Yes. Um, and I, I, I feel that when we try to make it 
like for the good of others, people don't buy into it. You know, yeah, it's, bad, it's, eh? it's like you got to convince them that it's for themselves only, and then they'll jump on it like uh, jumping on a grenade. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although wrong, an- wrong analogy because jumping on a grenade helps others. Damn it, I got that thing wrong. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm now I'm totally confused. They eh? are <laughs> saying I should jump on a grenade given the opportunity. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure. But the whole thing now has, you know, brought into question other vaccines. We're seeing we're seeing upticks in polio now in, in New York. I think I heard that, yeah. New York and London, they're finding polio in the wastewater. Right. And uh, which is crazy. This is a disease that should have been, we thought had been eradicated in North America, at least for a long time. Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. And it was still around in other parts of the world. But here it was like you didn't hear about polio. And now it's making a comeback because anti-vaxxers and disinformation. But don't you remember in elementary school, and again, because of both of our time frames, we're talking late 60s, early 70s. Don't you remember just going to school and it was like today is... I don't know, polio vaccine day. Mm -hmm. And you'd line up, uh, there'd be a doctor in one of the classrooms and you'd line up and you'd go over and you'd get your vaccination and like a little Band-Aid and go back to class. And that was that. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I, maybe maybe there were parents objecting and we just didn't hear about it. But uh, I don't know, I, 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 must, I feel like I must have been vaccinated six times. I have memories of it. Yeah, same here. And I'm one of the uh, the oddballs who doesn't have a vaccine scar, because most people have a vaccine scar. Oh, from, that from round vaccine. thing? Yeah, I don't the round thing. Either. Oh, you don't have it either? Okay. No, I don't know. My mom had a giant one. I remember growing up, she had a giant. I, I'm guessing maybe as time went by, the vaccines were less uh, less left less of a mark. Right. But I remember um, going to work when I first started working at the hospital, and they asked me if I'd been vaccinated. I said, yeah, of course I am. They said, well, we need your vaccination book because you don't have any scars. Oh, they were looking for the scars yeah, proof, they, eh? they had to make sure uh, right. that we were fully vaccinated. And the nice thing is at work is they would regularly once a year call you for boosters and stuff. Right. So you'd go to the health office and boop, they'd give you your boosters for uh, for whatever. Right. Well, here's another case. I, I had occasion to travel uh, to the Philippines on business about uh, eight years ago. And the company sent me to the CLSC here, which is, again, where you're in Quebec, it's the local not a hospital, but sort of a health uh, care clinic. And I was vaccinated two or three times. I didn't question it, you know, against whatever diseases I might have been exposed to in the tropics. And I was like, thank you. What's that? Did you get the hepatitis? You know, probably, probably. And then last year, I got the uh, shingles uh, vaccine. Uh, Why was that? I'd actually gone again back to the same healthcare clinic to get vaccinated for something I was already vaccinated for. There'd been some, on my part, a mistake because she had my vaccination record. She said, well, while while you're here, I'll do you for shingles. I was like, okay, fine. I, you know, I, I, I know someone who had shingles I worked with years ago and it's flicking painful. My mother-in-law had shingles uh, twice in one year. And how was that? Very painful. Yeah, very painful. So you get splinters from the shingles. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it took me a second to pick up on that one. So, yeah, I mean, uh, here we go. I mean, we're, we're living in this age of uh, miraculous medical uh, advancements. And, yeah, I, I, I guess just we just got to accept it that a certain percentage of the population is going to buck that. Absolutely. And I, I, and I think, you know, they might bring back a witch burning <laughs> at this point because they don't, they're not believing the cures. So, yeah, COVID, you know, uh, was, was, you know, uh, again, as we look back at it now from a distance of two years, you know, spawned a lot of conspiracies. There's also the conspiracies that have been spawned at like Bill Gates, you know, buying up all the farms during the COVID lockdown. There's all kinds of stuff spinning out of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that one. I've heard things, yeah, because he's very pro pro vaccine, whatever that he's yeah. got. Uh, you know, the other one is they're they're putting microchips in the vaccine so they could uh, track us because oh. they you know we don't all own the cell phone already, right? Yeah. So that means you and I are microchipped. Yes. Better watch what I do and say around here. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't put anything out over the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I wouldn't want to broadcast this so people might find out about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I I guess we could keep on talking about conspiracy theories all day long, but uh, I think we've had a pretty good look. You got any left? You want to uh, throw out on the table? I, I there's, there's some, but I don't want to get it out there because they might be shut down. <laughs> Well, you know, we can always loop back later because one thing we know is there will be new conspiracy theories in the coming months and years. And if there's anything you want us to talk about, uh, don't don't be afraid to reach out to us uh, through any channel uh, possible, including yeah. mind control. Uh, Richard used the forbidden term reach out there, but I'm going to let it go. <laughs> oh, my God. I did. I did. 
I'm cancel gonna, me. Cancel I'm gonna let me. It, no, I can't. I'm going to let it go because uh, he's my partner here. And, uh, you know, I'm giving him like a mulligan on that one. <laughs> Better a mulligan than a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now it's time for this week's rant. Dave, what's pissing you off? I'll tell you what, Richard. One of my guilty pleasures is uh, craft dinner. And I was reintroduced to craft dinner a couple of months ago by my two daughters who mentioned that they eat it with their friends sometimes. I thought, you know, it's been a long time. I'm going to roll in and buy some KD and treat myself to that old time flavor. So I walk, I head into the IGA. I look at the uh, display. First thing I notice is there's like 15 different kinds of KD. There used to be one or two. There's sharp cheddar. There's white cheddar. There's spicy three cheese, whatever. This is great. Mm-hmm. They've really evolved. So I pick up a, a selection of KDs. I bring them home. Make one, mm, it's fantastic, I love it sort of thing. First thing I ever cooked when I was a teenager, you know, put the milk in, six cups of water, had to measure it, it was beautiful. <laughs> I have my KD. Then I, a couple of days later, I thought, yeah, I'm going to have another one. So I grabbed another one and I thought to myself, there's something wrong here. The box seems to be half full because I could, like literally there was almost no KD in it. So I took a look at the uh, weight and I weighted the box and it was like 156 grams or something. And I pulled down another box from the shelf 200 grams. I think that's funny. What's going on here? Are they different prices, for instance? Went back to the IGA the next time I was in there and took a look. Lo and behold, KD's, 150, I don't know, what, what, what's with the 156? Wouldn't it be 155 or 150? Like, where's that gram coming from? They don't like to round. Yeah, they're not, yes, that's something against rounding. Yeah. So 156, 175, 200, 225 for the same craft dinner. And here's the thing, charging the same price. So I'm wondering if I've uncovered evidence of shrinkflation that's been in the news lately. I think <laughs> I might be onto something, and that by the end of the summer, my IG is going to be full of 156s. Uh, it might be. I think David's the price of those exotic spices they're using in some of the other blends. Oh, like the spicy, uh, the spicy KD exactly. has to be spice. Three cheese, three cheeses. Yeah, know? it's got to be expensive, right? Yeah, exactly. They got to drop the, they got to drop the noodles to make up for the price <laughs> of the cheese. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, that's I, I just think that there's something horrible going on there, and I've taken note. And you know, I'll be writing a strongly worded letter to the uh, cheesemeisters at craft if this is if this turns out to be a thing. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. <laughs>